It's been a pretty good year for the guy next to me, Kieran Fallon. And I say that in the sense that it's been an incredible year. I mean, you've gone from strength to strength off the back of the Apprentice title last year. Have you surpassed what you thought you might do? Yeah, definitely. Um, I spoke to my agent at the start of the year and, you know, we just wanted to build on last year and, you know, we're going to try and go to the next level and win a, win a group three, you know, and try and get in into the next stage of, you know, when you lose your claim, you know, try and prove yourself as a, as a professional. And, you know, I was very lucky that Oxford had come along and won the Abinet and went on to win the July Cup. And, uh, you know, I've had plenty of support of other owners and trainers and, um, you know, it's led me to be in a position where I'm leading the apprentices again. And, you know, it's, like you say, it's been an incredible year. I think we spoke at the, during lockdown, actually, and, and, and um, you talked about Oxted being a horse who, who could provide you with a platform. And I suppose you need that, don't you? You need the one horse. I think a Group 1 may have been, I know you thought he was good, but maybe he surpassed your expectations and you've surpassed your own, but he really has helped you to get to that next level. Yeah, he has. Look, it's, a, it's everyone's dream to get on a horse like Oxted, and I was lucky enough to, to get on him before the Portland and... Uh, you know, Mr. Teal kept faith in me then. Uh, let me keep the rod in him in the Portland. And, you know, this horse has just gone from strength to strength. And, you know, for a, any young rider who's just lost the claim, like you said, just needs that one horse. And, and luckily for me, I've had it while I've been coming to the end of my three pound claim. And as I've lost my claim, he's still been there. And, you know, look, I'm looking forward to, you know, hopefully, please God, he's injury free. He can provide him with a lot more success in, you know, the next few years. Were you were you disappointed you didn't win the, the the champion sprint? Yeah, of course it's disappointing. Look, we went very close. He was he was in front for you know a full furlong, and uh, you know obviously it was a long time since his last run, the July Cup, and I think on the stiff six, the testing ground really just caught him out a little bit. You know, the, you can be fit, but there's nothing compared to race fit, and I think um, you know if he had a, a, another run. In between, I think he'd have won that race. For me, he's the best six fall on course in, in around Europe, and uh, hopefully, you know, we're going to see him maybe in Hong Kong or Dubai, and you know, he'll be there fully fit, and you will see the best of him. So, looking forward to that. And it was great that that it was a it was Rogers Group One as well as, as yours. And I feel like you've developed a real there's a real sense of team about the two of you know the three of you as well with with, with Rogers' son. Yeah, no, yeah, look, it's uh, Mr. Tilly. He's been a big sport of me. Um, beforehand for my seven five and three pound claim and even now he's still still supporting me and you know it's good to get a to have a relationship like that with a trainer and obviously it, it was a big success for him and it put him up there and you know harry's done an incredible job with the sauce you know all the credit goes to him i'm just lucky enough to sit in him race day but it's a real good uh, you know connection between the horse and harry and you know the, the whole team behind what goes on he's, he's not the easiest horses to train you know he's got his problems but um, they've done an incredible job and i'm delighted to be part of it have you thought or had any opportunity about about going abroad over the winter or or, or into next year i know it's not difficult not easy with, with travel restrictions at the moment but is that something you would like to do at some point yeah i'd love to do it at some point but this year obviously due to COVID 19 and the travel restrictions i think i'm going to stay based here in um, in england and you know ride for mr haggis and qatar and you know, see what else I can pick up, and then wherever Oxted takes me, if it's Hong Kong or Dubai, I'll go there for two or three weeks, and then I'll, I'll be straight back. I need to, you know, keep this momentum going. Uh, you know, I've still only just lost my claim. I want to keep my connections, and you know, the trainers I ride for happy, and uh, you know, hopefully that can, you know, the momentum can roll on to to the next turf season. The the fact you rode your first, you, you lost your claim, you've ridden your first Group One winner, and you got that retainership as well. That's, um, I mean, that's you're in a fantastic position now. Yeah, very lucky. Um, you know, Mr. Haggis, he's, he's brought me up very well and he's conditioned me um, to a point that where if anything come my way, I'd be ready for it. Uh, he never rushed me into anything. He still speaks to me now. And, um, you know, I was very lucky to be a part of Oxted. And I think that was one of the main reasons why I got, you know, asked to join Qatar team. And that was um, a real good confidence boost for when a loser came. Um, you know, I know I've got a a good owner backing me and I've got a real good connection with Oshin which helps um, and you know I've ridden them a few winners already this year I've got like a 40% strike rate for them um, you know when you're riding horses like that it's very easy and it just keeps you on the board it keeps ticking you over and you know I'm, I'm overwhelmed with you know the support and you know with everything that's come my way this year I've just been very lucky I've been in the right place at the right time. You keep saying how lucky you've been you're obviously very talented in the saddle as well and, and that's not been lost on anyone but I think there's another aspect to you which is quite sensible and I think that's probably very important for helping you keep your feet on the ground. 
I mean, it's always a chance you go off the <laughs> But it doesn't seem like it's going to happen, do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, look, you know, it definitely won't happen to me. I'm, I've been, been brought up very well. My, my parents have done a great job. I've got an unbelievable family. And Mr Haggis and my jockey coaches, they're always there for me. And, you know, Maureen as well, she's been a big part um, off the track, you know. Besides race riding, mentally fit and physically fit, she's been incredible. Um, you know, and, you know, I've seen what happened to my dad and I don't want to go down that road. So I'm you know, going off a different way, a more professional way, you know, and I think if I can keep my head down, head, you know, feet on the ground, I don't see why I couldn't just keep progressing and learning. Because it's, it's interesting, I think, with a lot of sports stars, when they get, you know, you're on a fantastic trajectory, but you see a lot of sports stars, when they get to the, the, the top of their game and the top of their sport, it can be hard to keep everything else in, in check. But you think it's possible to do? Yeah, I think so. I think, um, you know, the hardest thing in life is is maintaining a, a peak of your career. Well, look at Ryan Moore, he's been at the peak for God knows how long. He's someone you need to model yourself into. Um, you know, I think if you work hard, you've got the right people around you. I don't see why you can't. And, you know, there's always there's always goals, you know, you can achieve and, and work towards. And, you know, I keep I keep speaking to Mr. Haggis and Michael Hills and my agent, going on, we've got goals. And, you know, if I want to reach them, I'm going to have to be 100% focused. I can't be doing this, I can't be doing that. So. You know, with the goals I've got, I want to achieve. I'm going to be 100% dedicated, and I'm going to work hard and to try and achieve them. What have you learned about yourself as a rider in 2020? You know, I think you know it's been a difficult year for everyone, and um, I think this year it's all about you know taking your time. I've I've learned just to relax a little bit more on the horses, and you know everything you know isn't seeming to to be as quick in races things are starting to slow down i'm starting to read races better i'm starting to get in the right position and you know i think that the my main you know improvement this year has been taking my time getting my horses to relax get them into a rhythm um which is is very important um you know races now were a lot harder you know there's only x amount of races on a card you can't be firing and you know every the people going to to races with two or three rides and they'll know everything about that race you know it's a lot harder so i think you know not being able to take your time and, and learning the races and the race courses as well it's been a it's been a big help for me this year learning the tracks as well i'm still just getting used to them all and i think my knowledge of the tracks is growing and i'm starting to add better races and uh, physically are you are you continuing to, to to get stronger you're in you're in the best physical shape you've been in i know you're very sporty throughout your teens anyway but you feel in, in as a rider now in the best shape you can be in yeah Definitely, um, you know I've, I've I've ridden more more horses this year than I did last year, and that gets you fit in itself. But you know it's things off the track where you've got to you know make things count and lots of running and and body weight exercises. I've been I've been, I've been doing a lot of to to keep myself um, at the peak of my fitness, and that's very important to keep injury free as well. And um, I've got a lot of people behind the scenes who are helping me progress and shape me into. Um, a more rounded rider and like you said fitness is very key it's it's all about you know the core you know a lot of people don't realize but all your you know all your strength comes from your core it's a big part and uh, I think with all the knowledge I have uh, through my uh, college years and personal training it's helped me to get into the peak shape of being race fit. It seems like you're in a, a good spot as well with with doing this sort of thing like you seem to have really you seem more comfortable in front of camera now than, than ever before. Is that something you've really learned? <laughs> yeah, I think it, it's kind of part and parcel of the job now, isn't it? Um, you know, I've got a great media team behind me, M3 Media. They've been incredible to me. They've they've grown my confidence in front of a camera, and um, you know, they've they've teach me how to speak properly in front of a camera, and you know, acknowledge, you know, how to present yourself as well you know they've been really good to me so thank you to m3 media they've been a big part of um, this year so yeah they're happy in what you're doing right this is good yeah you've got absolutely. like some good pals around you in the weighing room who are mainly taking the mick out of you on <laughs> social media all the time but that's that's but you seem in a really good spot yeah no look i couldn't be in a better place mentally and physically uh, like you said i've had an unbelievable year and you know the horses i've been riding and the people i've been riding for you know it just gives you the confidence to to go out and do anything and you know it's it, all little things apart from race riding there's other little things around around you that go on but it's, it's it's about having the right people around you and i believe i've got the right people around me to to keep me progressing and learning and you know i don't see why i can't go on to achieve um, bigger and better things i i think it's inevitable um long may it continue good man. thank you thank you sam